Contemporary essayist George Satayana says it best. Those who cannot remember the past are doomed to repeat it. If we don't learn from our past, personal and historical mistakes will keep making them forever. Perfect knowledge of the past doesn't only entail remembering the names of wars and kings. Those pass away, empires rise and fall, but their lessons last forever. It means understanding the past in its every facet, relating the world's history to our own. We consider ourselves educated. We recall our country was founded on July 4th, 1776, or Columbus discovered America in 1492. But we do realize the impact of these feats. Names and dates have their place, but they aren't the essence of history. In school, we learn to be smart, but when are we wise? When we connect ourselves to the past, dip our feet into the vast streams of person, place, and time. To have I have fully done this, for past becomes present, present becomes future. An overview of stage three illumination. Dear reader, at this point your shoulders may be slumping. An exaggeration. All right, you sigh. I understand what you mean by initiation education. But no one can be perfect in either stage. Moreover, perfect knowledge of the future? Impossible. Newspapers can't predict the weather half the time. The truth is that once you know, all else falls into place. Your eyes are open to the infinite. That reach of time we consider beyond our reach. You don't think foreknowledge is ridiculous anymore. My own eyes were opened through the covenant with the haunter of the dark. Haunter! The faceless god. He removed the veil. Can I tell fortunes? Yes, without error. But that's not my goal. My goal is to help others reach the same state of enlightenment. To gain foresight. In order to know the future, once you know the past and present and full, the step to be taken is to open your mind and extrapolate like on a graph. If you've done all you can to learn about people, places, and events, and how they are connected to your own being, this third stage is entirely possible, yet it's not easy in the least. In three years, I completed initiation. Six more to finish education. Now at 25, I am beginning illumination, my point. It takes time and copious effort to undertake such a journey of Gnosis. It is a Herculean task, not Sisyphean. Once you finish pushing the rock up of a stage, of it's a mountain, it won't fall down, it can't. You'll sooner unlearn your own name than your new revelations. One more thing, being able to foretell the future is a consequence of knowing the future. <coughs> but what about telepathy? We say the future is a mystery, as opposed to ancient history or current victory or misery, so that means the future is a state of mind, no matter. To know the future is to reach minds. Stage 4. Deconstruction and Reconstruction. I'll introduce you to this stage of a Bible verse. Mark 14, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is it? How are our minds renewed, and how are we transformed? By this process, if I were still a Christian, especially in the Calvinist tradition, I would tell you that it means our minds are turned around to face God and to obey Him, no longer facing toward the world and sinful unbelievers. I now follow a different spiritual path. In my case, this renewing of the mind is a physical and mental process. It actually requires the eating of dead and damaged brain tissue by living things, called lume, tiny microbes that incorporate themselves into one brain, like coral incorporates itself into rocks on the seafloor and becomes a living system. These creatures bring about the possibility of stage 5, which I'll explain later. For now, they renew one's youth and vigor, preparing one for the final step of the journey. Lethargy, fatigue, 
Old relics, those. White hair? Not a strand. Forget the advertisements. For creams and tonics and all sorts. Once Lume reconstruct you. First, of course. They have to deconstruct you. That's the terrifying part. During one of our communion hours, Otep informed me that out of every, every 100 followers of his, only a 10 attempt the operation. I haven't yet. Stage 5. Did we skip stage 4? Are we on stage 4? We're on stage 4. Okay. Stage 5. Correlation. Unlike the previous four stages, I don't completely understand the fifth. Yet like a greyhound chasing a mechanical rabbit, I know what it is and why it's there to spur me on to whip me into a frenzy so I'll reach the finish line of time. By the end of my 39th year, if I don't reach stage 5, all shall be in vain. I know it's called correlation, connecting the mind to all its contents and all that is. Imagine a file cabinet. It holds folders and images of all sorts, seemingly unrelated. We have files named Mother and Father, but also songs, colors, commercial slogans. Do you guys really? Do you really, though? It's like 1870-something for you. Do you really have commercials? You have not seen the ads that are on Twitch. Map directions, food, old proverbs, floor plans, and various houses. Money, dreams, shapes, love. We don't understand, nor can we remember most of them at any given moment. It's a disorderly mess as we go through our lives. We can only stand to pull out one or two at a time. If we went any further, we'd go mad. As so many asylum inmates demonstrate, stage five is knowing and correlating everything else within us and to everything that has existed or will exist. It is, in short, becoming a god. Jehovah is because he knows. As did Otep, knowledge lasts forever. Who has reached this state? Abdul Haller Zed who wrote the Nembrokernomicon. He was considered a madman. My father tried too hard. He died of bleeding in the brain at age 50. I thought... wasn't... I thought your father was the person I shot. I'm so confused. In the later years of his life, he wished to skip the fourth stages and proceed straight to the fifth. <coughs> With fatal results. He believed Otep's path was entirely based in the mind forgetting that the body and mind are connected. They must be rebuilt and renewed before the final leap is made. Would you let a child jump a gorge? I warn you, if you try, <coughs> you might die trying. You're more likely to lose your reason than to gain everything beyond reason's reach. Yet I also promise you that even in the attempt, the rewards are immeasurable. Yours, Lieber Wright. Day 5. 1885. Yeah, you guys don't know anything about commercials yet. Sunday, the Lord's Day was designated visiting day at Sanctum Prison. I didn't expect guests. However, Grace, ever faithful, came to me. When he brought a double helping of breakfast, old Jake also gave me the bitter news that prisoners on death row weren't allowed visitors. That's kind of sad. He put in a good word with the warden, and the latter had agreed to let my housekeeper and companion of more than 20 years say goodbye. That wasn't what she said at first, staring at me from behind bars in the prison foyer. Volinger, she rasped, and sighed, her hair twice as gray as when I'd last seen it. Why did you break the sixth commandment and grieve the Lord? Gripping the bars, I held back tears. I had to do it, Grace, for her sake. The witch? She'll drag you down to hell with her. Turn from evil. Dr. Allerton meant her harm. He would have fried her brain with electricity. I whispered this so only Grace would hear. If the guards did, they'd get suspicious. He would have done an experiment on her using a lethal device he'd invented. If that's true, why didn't you tell the police? Instead, you took the law's burden upon your own foolish self. Don't you recall, Roman? 1219. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, say the Lord. See, you know the Bible word for word, so why didn't you obey it? Allerton was an atheist, or so he said. Why should I have left him to a non-existent being? 
God wasn't there when I saw. Warning myself to be careful, I continued. That awful metal skull cap on her head. The wires, her scalp shaved. Not a strand of hair on it. Her blank stare and that glow. What glow? Of the dials upon her face. And the nodules of the bars on her skull cap. It was a horrible sight. But her fate would have been even more horrible if I hadn't. A just punishment. Deuteronomy tells us what to do with witches. I kicked the bar so hard they rattled. How dare you, Grace? You're a Christian. You command me to forsake my sins? Get Miss Wright to do so first. If she does, I will. That's not how salvation works. You know that full well. Grace took a ragged breath. I won't be able to sleep until I know your soul is in God's hands. Kneel. I'd hardly ever lied to my mother. Lying to Grace was just as painful. What was worth more, being true to myself or to her peace of mind? Almighty God, she began on her knees. On the opposite side of me, your humble servant beseeches you, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to forgive and save this man. A murderer though he may be, he has confessed his sin and seeks your pardon. He shall be put to death in the flesh, but be quickened by the Spirit. Though he has fallen under the spell of a wicked witch, so let it be banished through the power of the Holy Ghost. May the sorceress return to the devil, but may Martin return to the bosom of Abraham, as did the beggar Lazarus. <coughs> he cannot find the words to pray right now, but lift his burden, O Lord. Loosen his tongue, soften his heart, so that he shed tears of repentance before meeting you. Most of all, wreak vengeance upon Dr. Abraham Allerton if he also sinned. Didn't I kill him? I mean... Martin? She asked, making me jerk and almost finish my eye. Oh, my eyes finish. I'm so confused. What do you mean? So who was the one praying? Oh, she wanted me to finish the prayer. Okay, I was like, what's happening? I concluded our supplication with the Lord's Prayer. When we reached the part about forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, my gut wrenched. God may have forgiven my debt, but the state of Massachusetts would. When we stood up, I asked Grace, what if there were another way? To save you? I don't know how, unless that whore admits her role in the murder. Trembling, I hushed my best friend. We'd both hang. I won't have it. I'm giving my life for her because I love her. Grace looked horrified, but I charged on. I won't let her die before her time, or before she accomplishes her great work. You believe she's in league with Satan, but she's never heard a fly. I swear upon the last drop of blood in my body you forgive me, but why don't you forgive her? I've hoisted myself on my own gallows I've been done for, but she still has a chance. My housekeeper hawked, but didn't spin. She lost it when she didn't confess. The rattling of chains and the stomp of the guard's feet brought silence. Time's up, Vollinger, ma'am. My captors touched their hats in the presence of a lady. I submitted to the shackles, but before I was led back to my cell, Grace cried, Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Acts 3.19 Hopeful and lofty words, but nothing more. Libra's sudden voice in my head, Everything boils down to two principles, obedience and sacrifice. Remember what I told you, that Fyodor Todetsky taught me about the three temptations of Christ. It's all true. Otep is the miracle, the mystery, and the authority. The three in one. Total freedom of mind is total chaos in the mind. Mental anarchy. I tried to bear it, but could not. I needed parameters. I needed something or someone to be greater than me in order to have someone or something to worship. Without worship, even of the self, I die. I bow to the crawling chaos, because in reality, he is the crawling order. It is his duty to make order out of chaos, to make meaning of life's senselessness. It's Azathoth, the father he hates, who embodies destruction and balance and madness. Do you understand it? the deepest reason why I followed up? Martin, I hear you scream, caged inside your skull and your cell. Set yourself free. How, darling, I exclaimed, slamming my fist down. 
you're not even free. Some Gnostics say Lucifer, being the foe of God and the friend of man, chose to sacrifice himself by picking hell over heaven. He is not a powerless prisoner there. He remains a willing captive, as a price for mankind's freedom. Am I a captive? Yes, in all senses of the word, but I embraced my chains. You do not. Don't I? I live for you. I'll die for you. That's why I didn't betray you to grace. I know, and I love you. The chains I speak of are spiritual. Once you understand, the same two fundamental principles apply to you, as well as me, your true shackles will fall off. You won't want to die. As you do now, you'll want to live forever instead. In the service of that horror, that monstrosity never. I once said never to, Martin. Now I ask which monstrosity, which horror. Lieber's face faded. I sank my sweat soaked head down on the table and slept. My height is six foot. My weight is 140 pounds. The snapping of a human being's neck requires 1,260 foot pounds of pressure. Conclusion? I need to drop nine feet to die. I don't want to die. Not at any meridian age. For nine times five is 45. And it's not. And we're logged out. Great. Well, I don't feel like making another part, so we're gonna click back on the website, and we're all gonna bear with it as I have to load everything all again because Creepboss website keeps logging me out for some reason. Not that I have to log anything; it's just I'm middle of rating, and then all of a sudden, oh, web website closes. I mean, even actively scrolling, like, to keep reading. But yeah, it's going to take a moment for me to reload everything. Ah. Load faster. My phone is refusing to load. To do load faster. Okay, scrolling down as fast as I can. At least I should be most of the way through the story. Still scrolling. But I should be close to the end of the story. One day. We're gonna get there. Be nice if I could see how close it was to the end. Okay, there we go. I found the strength to finish my confession, which turned out thin. Still, what did I owe society? Not my life, not my life story. My life, not my life story. The important thing was that I explained the deepest reason I killed Allerton. <coughs> After Uncle Hans was committed, I swore to myself that I'd still be a physician, the one that healed minds instead of bodies, one that might cure people like him one day. Alas, although I managed to treat many, I could not cure nor could Dr. Allerton, who said he did. His preferred method of cure was lobotomy, which I think is worse than murder. I never performed one, even on my most disturbed patients. Yeah, honestly, I think murder is more merciful than killings, than doing a fucking lobotomy. As for Allerton, as soon as I met him, I thought him both inhumane and inhuman, an anatomical doll. Why? Such men were the types who dragged my sobbing uncle Hans to his own prison cell. The doctors who took him 
nor displeased to remain with his family. With me. I was only a lad at the time, but instead, but insisted on going at Matilda and my parents to say goodbye. Unprepared for such a dreadful scene, I couldn't stand it. I had not fathomed the torments the sane inflict upon the insane in the name of health. Dr. Allerton's bony face. I saw the same man who led Hans away. That was why I pumped six shots into his skull to obliterate him outright. I do shed tears of repentance, not because Dr. Allerton's dead, but because... I failed to stop myself from shooting him. I became a murderer, but I pray to die a good man. Dr. Martin Volger, Psychiatric D, Doctor. Day 7. Midnight or there are parts about my bed. A curious wait. Once I saw who and what it belonged to, a hand clamped itself in my mouth. People always think that seeing a monster or a horror beyond words would drive them rad. Tis not the case. The real horror is seeing a man who is a monster. All I could say once the hand clamp on my removed itself. Hello, N. My ex assistant, my humble factum, Otep, smiled at me. You're not real, he said. I said, You're a figment of my imagination. Was I a figment of Libra, Micah Wright's imagination? I think not. What a doubting Thomas you are. Reach out and touch me. N held out his hand. I grasped real flesh with real bones beneath. Very well. I willed myself not to fall apart. How did you get past the guards? The crawling chaos scoffed. I can get past anything and anyone, including the limits of your time and space. I blinded the guards without doing anything to their eyesight. Let me tell you a little story. An anthropologist once came to visit a group of island natives. In order to live with them and record his observations about how they view the world, one day he was standing on the seashore of a native. On the horizon, he could could be seen a large ship with sails. The anthropologist drew the native's attention to it, but the native couldn't see it. The ship was such a foreign, an unfamiliar sight that it didn't exist for him. It was inconceivable he had to blank it out. When the prison guards saw me, they had to blank me out. Kind of reminds me of this one thing where they visited these um, one group of natives that lived in caves most of their life. Now, granted, they went into some open clearings, but never really very far. So they never really saw anything past like 10 feet further from them. So when they saw like a herd of buffalo in the distance, they didn't understand perspective, and they thought, like, what kind of bugs are those? And they thought that they were the size they appeared and tried to reach out to touch them, and didn't understand the distance. But that's that's just true of anything if you don't have certain experiences. I mean, people learn via experience. They can also unlearn via experience. It just sometimes... It's like certain things, whether it's pain or physical training. You know, all things in moderation. I mean, if you lift too hard, you're going to hurt yourself. Not at all. You won't get any stronger. Though everyone's got different limits and everyone's bodies react differently. Pain, I mean, there's people that don't feel pain at all. And they tend to die before other people because, you know, say if you're cooking some grilled cheese on a stove and you actually touch the burner, you pull your hand away right away so you don't hurt yourself. But if you don't feel that pain, you won't pull your hand away, and then you'll end up with a serious injury that could get infective and maybe even cause a blood disease or something. You die. Same way, though, if you experience too much pain, well, then that also, like, fucks your central nervous system, and that kills you too. Or it sends you into shock. Which also can really, you know, kill you. I don't know. I'm just rambling. Yes, I'm in this human form. But I showed a little of my true self to them. What the guards could not see with the odd proportions of my physical geometry. This reminds me of a story where there was a group of aliens that kept meeting people, but they looked like so eldritch, otherworldly to people that all the races of other worlds just started trying to kill them on sight. And then when they come to humanity, they're like, yeah, we're proud to wipe these people out too. And then all of a sudden the humans were like, while they seemed scared of them, they're like, they actually attempted communication. The humans actually developed a relationship with these otherworldly beings that seemed to exist in a fourth dimension. And then eventually they found a way <coughs> to um, make it to where they could both see each other in the normal proportions. And when the aliens viewed the humans through this device, they actually found the humans were a little bit more scary than they initially thought. But they could cope with it. it. Wasn't nearly the reaction the other species had to them. 
So they were like, okay, fine. But the humans just cracked up laughing because the aliens were like palupas. <coughs> anyway. You're trying to, but that's like to try not to see the back of your own hand. I chose a form so familiar and so dear to you in terms of friendship that how could you not see me? For better or worse, you can't shut your eyes. Ask me anything. I attempted to sit up, but couldn't. Are you here to help me escape? If you wish, I'll change your name, your face, your deteriorating body into spry you to one you had before. You'll no longer be Martin Bollinger, but the new creature you believed you'd be in Christ, built to last and to transform. To become as you are, and grinned, his teeth glowing, snow white in the light of the waxing gibbous moon. Not quite. To go through the rest of the same stage as Libra. At the very least, at this point, she's so far ahead of you that she might well float off this miserable sphere before you finish your initiation. But that's besides the point. If you accept my offer, you'll become my newest disciple and servant. Libra and I shall teach you. In this particular incarnation, I become quite fond of you. No matter the lesson in humility you gave me not so long ago, you were in the right and I in the wrong. I didn't care. What do you mean in this particular incarnation? Lieber didn't tell you. Another one of my titles is a god of a thousand forms. As Dr. Lyther of Nye, for instance, I had a good run, though my students were nuisances. When I don't inhabit a physical body, when I choose not to, I often influence the minds around and seek to nudge in the right direction for my purposes. When your poor Uncle Hans lost his mind, not due to me or my father, but the vagaries of time and disease, you glimpsed me in the eyes of the doctors who hauled him away. I pointed a finger that wavered all over the place. You unholy bastard. Was I? Apart from that glimpse, it turned out those good physicians didn't need any help when it came to being monsters. I let them go after you saw me. And they continued on their merry way, dragging your uncle along. Whenever you humans do anything bad, you say the devil made you do it. But you don't need his infernal assistance. I discovered this on the day I discovered you. What? Were you up there in heavens looking down at me? Precisely. I wanted you for my own, but unlike Jehovah, I don't rig the game of salvation beforehand. You're intelligent and perceptive, capable and influential. You also have direct access to the mad. Or at least you did. If you choose to serve, you'll continue to practice psychiatry, ensuring me a supply of potential followers. If I'm going to wage war against my father, I need an army of my own. This is insane. I'm going insane. An army? What kind? How will it fight? That's for me to know and you to learn. Even Libra hasn't figured it all out. The files for how and why are all in her mind, thanks to Lume that reconstructed her brain in stage four. Thought she hadn't got there yet. But they're so scattered and disorganized that she isn't able to correlate them by herself. She needs the final stage to do so. Now it was my turn to grin. And then she'll defeat you, saving the world. <coughs> and laughed and laughed, making my cot shake as if a train were passing. Is that what you think she'll do? Save the world. Hallelujah and amen. You know nothing. You don't know what Libra knows. You haven't seen what she has in either the past or the present. Oh, you guys remember the anime Trigon? It's a really good anime. You haven't peered into the minds of your fellow men, seeing the evil within far outweighs the good. We outer gods are beyond such concepts of morality. But what about your precious earth? It won't last. Neither shall your race of worms. War will come and never stop. Not only will there be two world wars in your coming century, but they'll open the door to the extermination of your kind. Literal hellfire shall rain down in torrents. A great massive cloud that kills all life. The fog that pest controllers use will be not compared to this save the world. Men will choose to go to war. Choose to invent the ultimate instruments of death. Choose their own extinction. Extinction through destroying their natural environment. Your planet can no more be saved than a speck of fly, fly dirt can. In fact, your world is a fly trap. A disposable one. And all of you are flies. Tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. You have to be. We aren't monsters, unlike you. Oh, your history, written by the winners of war, is one of monstrosity. Let's put aside the citizens of the good old USA for a moment. Take your own people. Can't you remember the Thirty Years' War in Germany? Or don't you want to? Damn you, I learned about it as a young man. 
and then I learned to forget it. Did you? Stopping me cold, he read my mind and read an actual fact. Be a good schoolboy and tell me the gist of it. Why did it start? I shut my eyes and then opened them. Unlike the United States of America, Germany wasn't a unified country at the beginning. Rather, it was a hodgepodge of city-states and dukedoms vying for supremacy. In the 17th century, my homeland became a battleground for the other European powers. Everyone wanted a piece of our pile. Whether they knew or not, the filling was human flesh. As always, don't forget money and power to give it flavor. And what of God in all this? The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus Christ. Don't you dare speak of him, you blaspheme. A fair point, but consider. Did Jehovah tell either the Protestants or the Catholics whose side he was on? That would have lessened the slaughter considerably. Each sect, each Christian sect, committed mass murder against the other in the name of the Prince of Peace. Thou shalt not kill, not as an individual apart from God. That is why you have been sentenced to die. You yourself killed. With God's sanction in his name and his cause, murder is not only committed, but commanded. Israel did it, Rome did it, Spain did it, even the honorable state of Massachusetts did it. That's our fault. We're only human. We misunderstand God's laws. Oh, I believe you understand them perfectly, weak as you are. Why must there be war and death and bloodshed? Why are you collectively worse than animals? Because we haven't learned to love each other as Christ has commanded. Tell me, how can love be a choice and a commandment at the same time? That's irrelevant. Love is the only thing saving us from evil, in the midst of evil. My friend turned enemy's eyes gleamed. Love the highest of ideals. It conquers all, or so the stories say. Let's talk about love, about Lieber. I had him over a barrel. If she reaches her fifth stage, it's all over for you. Once she becomes a goddess, she'll absorb you and redeem humanity. In our realm as in yours, an unbending law of hierarchy exists imposed by me, even if Libra completes the fifth stage. Who do you think invented them? She may become a god, but one far lower than myself. No matter how high she rises up, I'll be several steps higher. Such is the power of the only begotten of Azathoth. Of course, from start to finish, I have been what your playwrights call the fifth business. The catalyst, the agent of the change in your life. You called on God in childhood and youth, believing in the old tales about Jesus of Nazareth, but deep in your heart you knew there was something and someone else besides. You wanted a different God, one just as powerful but refusing blood sacrifice. In spread his arms. Here I am. Ka, the black pharaoh? He was my most devout slave and a most devout fool. I didn't need the rivers of blood he poured out upon the ziggurats to feed me. He misunderstood what I eat. Energy. Not the constructive kind, either. I feed upon negative energy. Fear. Hatred, lust, anger, all the emotions you try not to feel. I am an antimatter force, and an antimatter form at my core. I inhabit a body of flesh, but I can shed it as easily as a suit of clothes. Did I understand? Perfectly. And not at all. What's antimatter? Oh dear, forget that, for now. Think of it as something imaginary, as you're still thinking that I'm imaginary. Now then, I drew you to Libra for three reasons. First, to introduce myself to you in an oblique way, through her. Second, to have you, hel have you help her defeat my other servant, Dr. Allerton, who sought to turn her and your race into mindless slaves, instead of well-informed disciples. <coughs> when Ann didn't speak for a while, I prompted, and the third reason. He sighed. In that exhalation of breath, I heard all the weariness of every soul in every domain. Even future gods can fall in love. I warned Libra not to give herself to you, not to betray me and all she had gained through me, yet she did. She bared her body and spirit, yet you spurned her like a street whore. Why? It would have been against God's law. The Bible tells us to flee fornication. Don't give me that. I told Libra to draw you in and she did, but you did the same to her. You hooked her like a fish. Libra was supposed to be the lure, and now she has been lured. She thought you were her last chance. She was right. Last chance for what? To break away from me. To repent, in your feeble Christian terminology. She turned to you instead of She turned to you instead of to your God, but you rejected her. I had to punish her, you know. This moment she's wailing in despair because you're going to die. I didn't try to reassure her that all would be well, because it isn't for either of us. 
I could have wiped her memory of you when I injected the Lume, but I didn't. Worst of all, she saw it coming. Libra is going through hell. You're going to hell. You don't know that. No one does. Except for God who opposes you. In grabbed my hand and shattered. That sounds like it hurt. I shrieked. Yep, yeah, it definitely hurt. He shrieked. Knowing no one else would hear. That's what it feels like. Are you willing to face it for one more second? How about a year? Ten years? A century? A millennium? Even a thousand years is a drop in the ocean of eternity. You serve me and progress through the five stages. You will avoid such a fate. In addition, you'll be able to rescue those who suffer there. After catching my breath, which took a while, I sneered. I won't yield to fear. Fear is a powerful motivator, even more potent than love. Because many of your kind would rather be feared than love, I brought another book for you. I don't have time to read. They kill me in the morning. It's like, I'm not I'm not a speed reader. I'm a person who casually reads for... He reached behind and picked up a volume I hadn't even sensed was there. Its cover? Pulsing and squirming human skin. What is a fucking Necronomicon? Saliva is my own. It wrinkles, pits, and depression squirmed and formed an image. An image of a god greater and worse than in. Horrific description. That's my father. The abyssal idiot. Damon Sultan who sits at the center of creation. No matter how much I hate him, I still serve him. And this is his unholy book. <coughs> With steady hands, my former friend and helper opened it. In blood, of course, were written countless names. In terror, I spotted Libras. I didn't force her to sign, no matter what you think and how much you accuse me. I gave her time to decide if I would be her lord as well as her savior. I offered her knowledge and redemption, not from sin itself, but from the ignorance chaining her to a closed system that would bind her to your god and your puny prison planet forever. She knew what she signed up for, do you, doctor? I found the strength to sit upon the bed. No, but I won't follow in her footsteps. Why? Inn's tone was that curious, it hurt friend, about to be forsaken. Because you used me. You use everyone, because you're evil. Or is it because in the end, you're disgusted by the, you're disgusted by the idea of bowing down before your former servant? The one who scrubbed your instruments, calibrated your scales, did every task that you were too high and mighty to do yourself? Haven't I been good to you? For more than 20 years, haven't I obeyed you? Haven't I done anything and everything you asked of me? Haven't I been kind? In order to be cruel, get thee hence, abomination, and trouble me no more. My offer stands. Until you don't. With that, he finished. The book of, of Azathoth he left behind. I collapsed into a fever dream. How many more of this unliving, this living nightmare ended? Lieber stood before me, floated in a black morning dress and a veil, which had seen her at the asylum. Around her, not the blinding white light of heaven, but the infinite firmament. Hundreds of stars, thousands, millions reached out. My love, she said, on the voice point of breaking, you're dying. Yes. As usual, my dreams I spoke normally. I am, and you're a hallucination. Say what you will, but I'm not signing that book. I'll die free. Free? Of the love that made you want to save me from Dr. Allerton. Of the obsession planted in me by your otherworldly puppet master. If I recall, those born under your zodiac sign are highly manipulative. I can't believe what a fool I was. A German worm on a hook, and you a most enticing bait. Is that all I was? I wanted you to have me so we'd both be released. If that's so, then reject your god and come to me right now. We'll marry and make love. I can't imagine that the warden would deny a dying man his last request. Even if you catch my fever and perish, you'll perish as a free woman. Lieber lifted her veil so I could see her starry tears. If you die, I'll never reach stage five. Bereft of my beloved, both in the abyss and on earth, I'll commit suicide. Don't do that. Live a normal life. For heaven's sake, be a normal person. And surrender everything I've gained. All the knowledge and foresight... All I've ever wanted since I've reached the beginning of maturity. No, I've suffered much, and I don't want it to be in vain. I've gone through hell already. The life of a woman in this century is its own kind of perdition. I'm pretty sure the life of everyone in every century kind of fucking sucked. I mean, they didn't invent, what, air conditioning come around like, what, the 1930s? And even then? I gotta look at what year air conditioning was invented. It's just... The past sucked. Really, like, there's certain things that are kind of a pain in modern times. 
But I'm so glad I live in an era where I can drink some ice cold cherry Coca Cola and watch anime and have plenty of food. Then, you know, all of the shitty conditions of the past. Besides, one for modern medicine, I would have been dead a hundred times over already. Not even an exaggeration, either. Don't think of it that way. If you're normal, you can love. You can survive. As most people do, unconscious of the purpose of their lives, unaware of their own spirit, going through the motions of devotion to an abstract god, once upon a time I believed. Then I sought to know, and my transition was rebirth. Forget it. Forget everything. Focus on what's real, what's physical. Find joy in the mundane things, and the fact that you're a mundane insect like me, a fly. They may not live very long, but they live, they eat, they drink, they mate too. Libra's eyes turn cold, orbs of gleaming ice. Find another fly, marry him, eat, drink, mate, reproduce, live a fly's life, and ignore those who swat them. It's the only way to defeat. Never mind that you're in stage four. His hold is tightening. That's the real hangman's news that will strangle me. Listen, reaching out again. I have always sensed that the first step in defeating evil, as you said, is to understand it. I seek to understand my god, no matter how much he eludes me. I want to know what his plans are for his army. If he wants war, who will fight and how much will it cost? Moreover, he wins, will we the fate life be like for flies and gods alike? That's what I want, Martin. I've seen war. Real war. It'll cost everything, including every human life. Perhaps I can change his mind. I can predict the future. I've seen what you have, but not all of what Otep has. Perhaps it won't come to war. If you believe that, I said, perhaps you're not as persistent as you thought. She pulled her veil down her face. I'll come immediately. I fell asleep when I woke. And we logged out again. Why do I keep getting exited out of the site? Like, I'm actively scrolling through it to keep reading. Well, now we all have to sit here and wait as I try to reload the freaking story again. <sighs> and my internet isn't that slow either. Like, I feel like I have really good internet. Like, I feel like I have better internet than most people that do have internet. And it's not like I'm doing a lot. I I have my computer in front of me. And I have my cell phone in my hands trying to read stories off of it. Well, at least we should be almost at the end. So we'll resume reading whenever I manage to scroll back to wherever I was in the story. <sighs> you might say, oh, why don't you just scroll back down to there you were? One, I don't have a sidebar showing me how far down I am. Two, I'm scrolling as fast as I can. My phone only loads this so fast. Like, what kind of phone do you have? It's... It's not an iPhone. Let's just go with that. It's not a flip phone, but it's not an iPhone either. I've never actually owned an Apple phone. Never had an iPhone. Is that even worth having? Is, is there, are there benefits to that? People that have iPhones... Why? Would you recommend? <sighs> this takes so long. Scrolling, scrolling. Ah. <sighs> ah. <sighs> How much further? Okay, I think I'm here. Okay, here we are. I 
fell asleep. When I woke, I felt her cool, soft hand in mine. Libra? Her name rasped from my parched mouth. You're here. Yes, she leaned down over me and smiled. I brought the chaplain. Through the haze clouding my eyes, I beheld an old man. And old Jake. Hello, said the chaplain. I'm old Jake's friend. He put in a good word for me with the warden. If you shall, if you want to get married, I'll marry you. Shall I? I could barely find the energy to nod. Aye. He felt my forehead. Good heavens. At this rate, your temperature will kill you before the gallows will. Let's proceed. He pointed at Lever. Ma'am, fetch that rag over there and wash stand. Some damp water. She did this and pressed the damp cloth on my forehead. That'll keep him comfortable cooler than he is right now. As for your wedding, it must be quick. Miss Lever Wright, will you have Mr. Mock Bollinger as your husband? To live to together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him? Comfort him? Have him and hold him, in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful unto him? As long as you both shall live. He cringed. All oh, right, because he's about to die. Uh, I mean that. That's, yeah. He cringed these last words. So did I. Yeah. I will. She answered, squeezing my hand. It felt like it had just entered an oven. Mister Volinger, will you have Miss Lieber right to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, have her, and hold her in sickness and health? Forsaking all others, be faithful in her for both as long as, for as long as you both shall live. This time, the pastor kept a straight face. I will. By the power vested in me by the Almighty God, State of Massachusetts, I now pronounce you man and wife. The chaplain smiled. I tried to. She bent to kiss me on the lips. I gently maneuvered my, her lips to my forehead. L Libra, I said, hand me the book. Book right there, would you, darling? She leaned over and took the dread volume from where it lay buried underneath my tangled, sweaty bedclothes. I held up my hand. B bite down. My new wife took my... Oh, you have to sign her in blood. Well, this is kind of... <sighs> Poor Jake! Like, he's gonna feel so uncomfortable watching this. <sighs> my new bride took my index finger between her teeth and clenched. It bled. What's going on here? asked the chaplain. But old Jake shushed him hard. Is the do other is the magical dude Jake as well? I'm pretty sure the magical chaotic chaos man, you know, chaos control. I'm pretty sure Shadow the Hedgehog is inside old Jake right now. Or is old Jake. He was old Jake all along. It's like I said, go watch the um the Lythero video, Shenanigans versus the Shade Rado Boss. Um it's they're playing Dragon Ball Fighters, but all the people in the raid boss, the Dragon Ball characters, like Kefla is um, Shadow the Hedgehog, and, and they defuse like, oh, Shadow was lesbians all along. I'm like, I find that hilarious and sexy. Okay, we're, we're, let's just forget about old Jake being Shadow the Hedgehog and move on. Does that mean old Jake's a lesbian? Go fuck yourself, man. We're not having this conversation. Just read the story! For fuck! With tremendous effort, I wiped my eyes and initially thought she'd gotten the wrong book. A Bible. Or one of her own works. No pulsing flesh. No grisly image. Then again, my sense could have been repressing those even as I looked at them. Then all names scrawled in red were a dead giveaway. I spotted a blank space. Blank. My mind emptied itself of all its thoughts. Everything was white and all. Then blood red. Fading to black. I moved my finger to the tip. Sign. I froze. No, I'll die as I am, for, but I couldn't finish. I'm sorry. Last bit of strength, I pulled the lever down and grasped my final words. Reached day five and redeemed my soul from hell. Before I closed my eyes, I saw Intep closer and nudged Libra aside. He didn't say a word. He didn't have to. He spoke from the con po fast con confines of my fast, necrosing brain. Obedience and sacrifice, Doctor. Why should you obey the orders of a crueler god than I and die at his command? Why should you sacrifice your life, not for Libra, but for the eternal law of sin and death that Jehovah has laid down for all men? Why should you suffer for eternity? All the promises you have believed and lies disguised as truth. Yes, you can be saved, but only if you deny yourself, surrender your own spirit. Yes, Christ will save you from the lake of fire, but only if you have no self left to burn. Yes, but guess what, you all injure. The but in translation actually means no. Your God has merged these concepts. 
As I have, I dare say I offer a better deal. You wretches aren't as free as you think you are. Don't let nature snuff you out. I opened my eyes and grinned at him. In triumph, I'd beaten him. In my mind, the laughing face of the eternal stranger, in a brilliant, billion brilliant colors laughing at me. This world and every other world, howling at our blindness, a refusal to see the truth, even if it's from our noses. My one consolation? Before death's darkness claimed me, Libra whispered, I will, one last time.